Welcome to the Game Changer Podcast. I'm your host, Elijah Bryant, and I got a special, special, special guest with us today. Got my brother, Chris. What's up, baby? How you doing? coming for this one. Yes, sir. So let me take y'all back a little, right? So when I first got into Tampa, you know, and I started going, you know, out to the party scenes, you know, the bars, Chris was like the most littest dude (laughs) outside. Like literally turning up. So I want to bring them back a little bit before I get into that, right? Yeah. So let's bring it back. How was like your story growing up? How was that? My story growing up. Um, so single mom, you know, typical story that's out there. Single mom, uh, she worked hard for us. And uh, I got a little brother, little sister. You know, we underprivileged kids and whatnot. Immigrant, grandparents moved from Dominican Republic. Okay. Father not in the picture, stepdad was addicted to drugs and alcohol and in and out of prison. That was my background. Um, and How many siblings you got? One brother, one sister. Okay. And, um, you know, at an early age, my mom always my best friend. Yeah. You know, my grandma, I guess you could say, was more like the mother figure, but my mom's always my best friend. So, like, I could talk to her about anything. And, you know, it's one of those, hey, you got to grow up early, grow up quick. You know? Right. So, my brother, I treat like my first son. My sister, I treat like, I mean, yeah, my sister, I treat like my first daughter. And, um, you're the, you was the oldest. I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. You know what I mean? so, Got to be the man of the house. Right. So it was, at a young age. At a very young age. So when my mom was going to going to work to take care of us, it was, you got to hold down the household. All right, I got him. You know what I mean? No matter what happens. Mm-hmm. And um, from there, it just, you know, I think that made me grow up early. So I didn't have, you know, the the, the, the addictions of I play video games 24-7 or mm. whatever the case might be. It was always hustle, hustle, hustle. And at 12 years old, one of the earliest memories I can remember is like coming home, all my friends had, you know, the the, the latest Xboxes or video games, whatever it was out at that time, period. And um, I remember crying. My mom's like, what you crying for? And I'm just like, I'm just tired of being poor. <laughs> right. like, what you mean tired of being poor? I was just like, I'm just, I'm over it. I was so overwhelmed, man, because I, I wanted more out of life. And you was 12 years was 12 old years at this old. time. Yeah. And you knowing you're poor at 12 years exactly. old, bro. You know what I mean? And, and there were kids that had it worse than us. There always is. Some, yeah. Always somebody is that has it worse than you, you know what I mean? But it was just, I was just tired of the life we were living. And I'll never forget. I remember looking at my, I grabbed my mom's face. I said, I promise you, from the moment I start making money, we'll never be poor again. Mm. And I, I delivered on that, that's for sure. You know what I mean? My mom lives good, my brother and sister lives good, you know, none of us have ever been to jail. Yeah. I got three beautiful babies, you know what I mean? Don't yeah. got I don't got twenty <laughs> kids running around the city, you know what I mean? Like so even when you saw me partying in the clubs, you know, like I always handled mine, you know what I mean? I've always been a business uh, person and I always care for the next person growing up. Okay. Um before you get into that, right? Uh so like talk about like did you go to college? Um, so I had a full ride to FSU, I turned it down and ended up joining the military. For what? Uh, full ride for academics. Academics, okay. I, I ain't like boy. <laughs> I played football and everything like that. You know, got hurt and then really just said, "All right, I'm done with the football scene." Um, I played baseball, but the baseball was too fast by the time I got to high school. You know what I mean? So it was one of those where it's like, "All right, I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna go to college." And then it was like, "All right, now that I got into college, I was like, I don't want to do that." Plus, I'm a Gator fan, so you know, go Gators. You know, I wasn't going, I wasn't going to the Seminoles, so I was like, I'm good. And uh, I went to college. I went the uh, military route. Yeah, so I did eight years in the military. Eight no, years. Know. Wow. Yeah. So where, like, where in the military? Like, uh, what countries did you? So everything I did was stateside. I ended up, uh, I ended up joining the reserve. So I did. I did go to part. I did go to college part time. Um, mm-hmm. I did like two semesters, and I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. This ain't for me. But I, I can't do it. Um, and I became a barber. And, and that's uh, where you learn how to become yeah, a barber? Yeah. So I, I've always cut hair as a kid, like since I'm 13 years old, I was cutting my hair, cutting my friend's hair, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I actually decided to become a barber because, um, and that's one thing I definitely want to talk in this podcast today is the importance of mentorship. You know mm. what I mean? I had several good mentors um, in my life that took a chance on a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I joined the military, I joined the reserves. Did you pay for this mentorship or was no. it just off of like, I see you grinding, I see you working, like, I want to put you under my wing? Network. You know, Network. sometimes you, and, and you, you can attest to this, sometimes you see potential in somebody. Mm-hmm. And when you see that potential in somebody, you give them a chance, you give them an opportunity. And it's up to them. Either they take the opportunity and run with it or they fumble the ball. The ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, getting back to the story, when, it, when, it, when I joined the military, I joined the reserves. So I had an option to go active duty, which that was my first choice. I was going to the Air Force and they changed their tattoo policy and 
it's no secret here. <laughs> I'm very well tatted. So they were like, when they changed their tattoo policy, they were like, you, you no longer could go into the Air Force. So they walked me next mm-hmm. door into the Army. So oh. I went from being active duty with the Air Force to Army Reserve. Mm-hmm. When I went to okay. Army Reserve, the only reason I went that route is because they were giving me a nice $20,000 up front. So I'm a hustler. I was like, you know, 20K, <laughs> let's, make it, let's make it work. And they were like, you can, ch- you can change to active duty once you're in. I was like, okay, cool, let's get it. I can ship out now. Long story short, that didn't happen. So when I came back, I got sent to Arizona. And then when I came back from Arizona, I was like, all right, it's time to go to school for this barber stuff. And the reason why, shout out to, it's funny, because now he's one of the hottest uh, DJs in Tampa, Blackout Lowe's. Oh, Lose. for real? So Lowe's used to be one of my barbers, and me and him used to cut in the garage. He, so did he teach you? Like, did nah. He, so uh, at this point, I already know how to cut. He knew how to cut. He went, yeah. to, he went to school for it. I didn't. So he got hired at Headlines Barbershop, right? When he got hired at Headlines Barbershop, I used to chill in Headlines Barbershop all the time. And when I used to chill in there, I would be like, man, Lowe's, he's like, yo, come get this barber money. And I'm like, man, barbers don't make the type of money I'm trying to make. Yeah. And Eli said I could be fully transparent on here. So we gonna, I'm, I'm gonna lay it out. Yeah. <clears throat> I used to sell drugs mm-hmm. um, on the side, right? That was my thing and that's how I survived. That's how I was feeding my family. And when it came down to it, I said, I don't want this lifestyle anymore though, because so it's going to go one or two ways. One or two ways. And I wasn't with it. So when it came down to it, Carlos was like, yo, bro, just take it, you know, like barbers get money. I was like, man, barbers don't make the type of money I'm used to making though. And he was like, what are you crazy? That week happened to be Christmas. So he made a thousand, like, uh, uh, I think he did like a thousand in two days. And he showed it mm. to me. And I was like, oh, that's straight. Hey, yeah. I could do that. It's just a different product. Mm-hmm. I signed up in barber school that next Monday. Damn. And when I signed up, I really went hard. And I poured my all into it. So before you get into that, right? Like you saw an opportunity mm-hmm. and you jumped right in. You ain't think, you just went. You took action immediately. I know me mm-hmm. and I know I work best when my back's to the wall under pressure. So I, I didn't give my chan- myself a chance to have a plan B. I knew if I dropped everything, quit everything and I poured it all into it, I was gonna hit. I feel the same way, bro. So like me leaving New York to come to Florida, I don't have no plan B. Like this it's gotta so work. So that's where I feel like, yes, sink or swim. If you put yourself in those environments, if you put yourself out there that you jump off the ledge or you jump into the water, you're gonna figure it out. Right? That's how I learned how to swim. My dad my dad when he wasn't in jail threw me in a nine foot pool. <laughs> I had to learn to swim. Yeah, that's how they say babies learn yeah. to swim. Like you just gotta just throw them out there. And they'll figure it out. I feel like that's the same way with us. And if you don't figure it out, you're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> you're going to figure something out. You're going to figure, something. You figure something out. You right. know what I mean? Like you, you know, you might have had this. This might have been your plan. And then that, that developed. It's not a plan B. It just developed into a better plan. plan. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so when, when Carlos did that with me, it became, uh, all right, I'm going to go to the barber route. I had so many opportunities to, to go with this guy, go with this guy, and open up a shop with this guy. Uh, Bob's Barbershop, and yeah. you know whatever, whatever the case might be. But there was three guys, and those three guys already had a successful barbershop called Headlines Barbershop, where he gets his hair cut. Yeah, every Thursday. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> so where you get your hair cut, in that same exact shop, that's our first location. That's where Car- Carlos was one of the first barbers they ever hired. So you went from being a barber at this shop, or not even a barber, going to the shop, to that's becoming awesome. a barber. To becoming a barber there. To now be in a partnership with the to owner. Part owner. And part owner. Yeah. Wow. So those guys, those three guys, you got Daniels, you got Chris Boss, Daniel Santana, Chris Boss, and Christian Perez. Those three guys. And I used to go in there and they used to have this white, it's funny, it's kind of like this, but it's a clear uh, plexiglass board that they used to have in there. And I used to write, Chris Loco coming soon. Oh, Chris Loco. And they would erase it and yeah. I'll come back, Chris Loco, Loco coming soon. But there was never no chairs because we always had one location at the time. Wow. So I get, check this out. I get yeah. sent to California. When I get sent to California, they turn around, <clears throat> they go, they call me up, Chris, you want that chair still? I'm like, hell yeah. The army goes, yo, we'll pay you $6,000 a month if you stay in California for another year. I said, mm-hmm. nah, we're going to jump again. I'm going right, I'm leaving California. I'm going right back to Florida and I'm going to pour my heart into this. I'm going to a place where I had no clientele, no nothing. Yeah. Go right back into the shop because the shop I wanted to work for. Mm-hmm. Three months in, Chris, you want to make you a manager. Well, here's the catch. Yeah. We need you to leave this shop that you just built your clientele at, cutting 60 heads a week at $20 a piece. Y'all can do the math. You know what I mean? Go from there. And now we need you to go to Lando Lakes. 
mm. or uh, yeah, Atlanta Lakes area, Sun Lake. <clears throat> Give up all my clients, I'll start over again. So I get there and guess what happens? What happened? I boom. Six months later, I get a phone call. We want to make you an owner. Wow. They took a chance on a kid. Yeah. He took the opportunity from manager and I blew it up. Then I become an owner. Now we need you to leave again. Go to Gibsonson. Now we need you to leave again. Go to Brandon. Now we need and to that's how again. you got all those locations. So just from, ooh, this is, this is good. This so is now good. Now we got six shots. So it's literally from right in on the mirror. Chris Loco coming soon. coming soon to work in there, to becoming now a part-time owner of multiple different locations. It's, it's the mindset, bro, mm -hmm. of you just taking action and just doing it. And now they're seeing that you're grinding. Nah, we want to cut you into the deals because yeah. now you, you're thinking bigger. You're, you're putting in the work. So the biggest thing I, I take away, and like I said, I love my partners to death, man. They changed, they changed my life. Like, I owe them everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, they really held me down. I love them forever. But one of the biggest things that we've always said and we live by, like, it's four guys. We weren't friends before this and all like that. It's four guys that just gelled. Yeah. And, like, even when there's tough conversations, like, like I was just talking with, with, with Brody, your photographer, yeah. right? It's not the man behind the camera. You know what I mean? It was just, we were just talking it up. One of the biggest things is when you have a partnership, the biggest thing is to have those tough conversations mm. because that's where growth comes in, right? And we've had those several conversations like that, but we, we all know we're on the same page. Okay. We're going we to get there, but we're going to get there together. And the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway I've gotten from my partnership and my mentorship is everybody's focused on creating a bigger slice of the pie for themselves versus focusing on making a bigger pie. Uh, if you focus on making the pie bigger, naturally, everybody's slice will get bigger. bigger. And that's how you grow. If you focus on that, bro, you change the game. And that's what I'm learning and I'm seeing now. Oh, we're gonna get into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. So so now, right, you're a part-time owner. So is this now when I'm starting to see you? Like so you see you see you see when I retire. Because for me it's uh when I retire from Barbering, I'm like Jordan, I'm back in Barbering again, right? You <laughs> know what I mean? I'm like I'm like I'm like the hove, right? I'm back, I'm back in Barbering, I'm cut hair again. But you see me when I was cutting the Toronto Raptors. So you know, oh, because they were down, down here during COVID. COVID. I cut the whole team from the president to the ball boys to the coaches to executive, uh, whatever their, their title was, to the ball players. I cut them all to the point where they made a uh, uh, one of they converted one of these hotels into a little barber shop for me. Wow. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and they were getting haircuts like two hundred dollar haircuts every two or three days. Damn. So, yeah, they was out. <laughs> I, I bet to say I was the highest paid barber in Tampa, and that's like not to brag. It's just, yeah. I was cutting 100 heads a week in the shop, because I was still in the shop too, yeah. cutting their heads on the side, and then I still did house calls, four, four or $500 house calls, and I would do 18 of those a week. Wow. So, you know, I was really it getting something bad, but I put in work for it, you yeah. know, over time. Um, so now, you get in the bag from the Toronto Raptors, your businesses, is that when I kind of started seeing you? Because when I started seeing you, you was literally in the club, in the section, yeah. A lot of people, you paying know, every, paying every, paying for other people's section. Um, and so when you see me, and I got I got a question because yeah. you, you used to asking the questions. Mm -hmm. When you see me in that in that in that time frame, what are you thinking? I'm thinking one, right? I'm low key with it at this time. Yeah, I got some money, but it's not like nobody really know me like that. So I'm behind the scenes seeing this. I'm like, damn, he's turning out. Yeah, he got everybody turned, and not just like everybody, like everybody mm -hmm. like the section next to yours is turned off of your section mm -hmm. so i'm noticing like damn what is he doing that was going in my mind like yeah. i need to know what he's doing <laughs> you know so yeah a lot of people thought i was selling drugs um because like you said i was coming in the club with ninety thousand dollar necklaces on and twenty thousand dollar sections at certain times depending on which club we're in whatever the case may be and it and it's true you know what i mean but I learned, and you, I guess sometimes you gotta get out of your system. I'm 32 years old, you know what I mean? But I learned at that time that I, when you see me doing that, everybody was like, oh, Chris, 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 the man, da da da, whatever the case may be, which is cool, you know, whatever the case may be. Full transparency, I was more depressed than I've ever been in my life. Wow. 
more depressed. I had the jewelry, you know, there was a bunch of, you know, everybody's in my section. Guys, girls, it doesn't matter, whatever the case may be, right? Bunch of bottles popping. I was paying, bro, there would be random strangers. I was telling you guys something. There'd be random strangers. I'd be like, yo, hey, they're cool, man. I'm paying for their section. Oh, they're cool over there, too. Yeah, I'm paying, for, not buying them a drink. I'm paying for their section. section. We're talking two, three thousand dollars. Yeah, I got that section, this section, and my section. Go ahead, swipe it. It's cool. It's gonna go through. It, it may have came off cocky. I'm not a cocky person. I'm a very yeah. confident person, but I'm, you know me, bro. I, I'll give you a shirt off. It definitely I wear a cape. Yeah. But at the time, it's like, yo, he liked a man. Yeah. But really, I'm crying on the inside, bro. I was depressed more than you know because when I, I took a chance outside of my businesses to make an investment into another company. Mm. And when I did that, I think I cleared like 1.3 million. Right? When I did that, I was, uh, come to find out, it was one of the biggest Ponzi schemes mm. uh, in, in Florida. It was over a $200 million Ponzi scheme. So I lost everything, but not just me, like people around me. We, we lost everything. Like yeah. my boy's mom put her, or her aunt put her 401k into this business. You know what I mean? People poured millions of dollars into this business on the strength of my name. Yeah. And when the SEC came in and shut it all down, it was like, I had to look at these people in their face. And the biggest thing I'm big on is my reputation and my network. Yeah. So if, imagine if I take you, you're mass successful, I'm like, yo, Eliza, invest with me. You're yeah. gonna make money. You start making our money and then you lose it all. all. That's tough to look you in the face. Yeah. So when it became that, because I care so much about my relationships, I literally designed not just a business, but I or just like a business, excuse me, just like a business, I designed the blueprint for my suicide. Damn. I and have this is all this around this time. That you know him. That I'm knowing you. And you like, wow. yo, Chris is lit, he popping. Everybody, yeah. you, Mimi, Erica. You know what I mean? But this is why it's essential why God puts people in your life, right? Because yeah. it's like, if I didn't have a Mimi and Erica, I might not have been able to make it through, you know, put it off longer. Because in, the, in me getting that friendship, I was yeah. like, you know what? Not today. Not today. Yeah. So it gave me a little bit to hold on for. Not just, you know, I couldn't even look my kids in the face because I knew what I was going to do. I would hide myself in a room, yeah. come out to the club, drink, blow the money. You know what I mean? There was nobody to, to like wake me up out of that. And tell you like, yeah. this is not the way. So, you know, when you when you meet me and see that, it's like, it was, it's, it's it gets me emotional. You know? yeah. It's like, yo, I beat that. Yeah. Like you said, it's sink or swim. Now my back's against the wall. Either you gonna commit to making that suicidal decision or you, yeah. or you gonna figure it out. And you know, there's a young lady, my girl, Hadil, who came into my life and was like, that's not, that's not the move. You know what that's I mean? Like, like, you gotta do something else. So. Now, right, you was popping bottles, and I think once we, after we met, you know, Mimi introduced us, mm. you know, I think that was like kind of when you started declining. Yeah. Right? And then that's when you hit me up, you seeing what I'm doing, you was like... And before that, not to cut you off, yeah. but, and before that, I took the last little bit of bread I had, and I've always known wholesaling makes money, mm -hmm. but I invested in a course. Okay. So we're gonna give that one give it in the chrono chronological yeah, order, right? Yeah. So I went to high school, which some of you guys might know this, might know this gentleman, but I went to high school with Steven Morales. We yeah. were on the same football team for we went to school together for like six months, but we were on the same football team. Yeah. I remember when I would go to Publix and he was the bag boy. Wow. That's you look at look at him now. And for the people that don't know Steven, he's like one of the top dudes in Tampa. That boy, in he wholesaling, is. he's I look up to Steven, you know what I'm saying? So Steven is that dude. And, but that's what I'm saying. So, so when, I, when I'm seeing, and he used to come to my barbershop just like you, you know what I mean? So just like how you was looking at me saying, yo, yo he that dude. Yeah. And then I disappear. I was looking at Steven like, this is my homeboy. I remember when he was a bad boy. Now, nah. hey, yo, Steven, what's good, bro? So I reach out and I'm, you know, I'm not asking for a handout. Yo, what's good? Like, should I put my money here? So I invested my money um, and I learned. I learned a shit ton, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So much. It's just, I think it was the wrong vehicle for me. Yeah. Because they were focusing on houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I went out and I, I did my due diligence and I was I, I got a, a, a virtual assistant from the Philippines and I had them calling for me and I was, you know, I was doing what you I was supposed to do. You had the whole setup. I probably blew about like seven, eight K. No, I definitely invested in myself, you know yeah. what I mean? But that was the last little bit I had. So what was it about houses? I think when it came to houses, and we've talked about this, is 
it's, it might be a little, it's too personal. Mm. So a lot of the things is like, you might turn around and look at a house and say, okay, I want to, I want to buy the house. The house is worth three hundred thousand. You're saying, okay, I want to buy it for two fifty. Yeah. They're like, oh no, I can't do that. I raised my kids in this house. So that, that's no, I can't. You know, it becomes that. Versus when we sit down and you piece together part is that I focus on land. You now take out the emotion. Emotion. And that's where I be telling people the emotional connection with houses. These people have an emotional connection to the house, so they're less likely to sell to you because. Nobody wants to lose their childhood home. Nobody wants to. I did it, and I lived in an apartment my whole life. When I had to give up that apartment, I cried. Yeah. This is my whole childhood. So that's what makes land so powerful. And if you look, it's, it's all about time and place and market, right? All that comes into, uh, in, in, into the whole theory of it, right? Yeah. So when you, when you look at it, if you go back to last year when we did business, last year the market's crazy high. Yeah, that's so my house went from I bought my house for two thirty. My house was at one point worth five nineteen. Damn, I didn't sell it. We still have it. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's worth five nineteen, bro. Like, why would I wholesale you my house? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, bro. I'm gonna put that on the MLS and I'm gonna get max profit. profit. For it, you know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like that. That made it even worse. That was the harder part. God bless Steven, you know, he, he had those builders and everything set in place where he was still catching deals, but he'd been doing it for so long at that He already place. had the momentum. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Yeah. I'm the new guy trying to get up and it's, it's just not hitting for me. And I had so many leads. I had a guy in Davis Island, a million dollar house, wanted to sell it for 800,000. I was like, oh, I'm about to get a 200,000 set. <laughs> you know, I was so hyped. I remember talking yeah. about it, right? But when, when, I, when we finally sat down, I reached out and I said, Eli, I need you to just give me 15 minutes of your time. I need, to, I need to link up with you. I need to chop it up, bro. I need in on this wholesale. I couldn't even pay my rent. Yeah, I remember. I, remember. I knew I had hustle. I knew I had drive. I knew I, I had the recipe on what to do. I just, so what I said, I said, you want a JV on the deal? Like if I find a deal, is there something? And you just like, yo, pull up, let's chop it up. Yeah, so now you pull up, you know, you telling me about the houses, you know, we was chopping up about that. And I understood completely, right? Wholesaling houses, you can make money, but it is a hard work. Everybody is doing it. You already had the hustle. I seen it. I seen you shining. Mm-hmm. So I know if you could if you could get there one time, you could do that again. Absolutely. So now we had the conversation and you know how'd you how'd you start off again? Like so, explain that to them. So with, you talking with you, right? Yeah. All right. So when I pulled up with Eli, Eli is it's funny because it's not your course, right? Yeah. He, he's giving me the blueprint of how he addresses a market, how he looks for buyers, how he, he exactly what he has in the course. It's what you sat down and showed me, right? Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I remember that same you know couple of days where I was over here and whatnot. You were like, yeah, you know, like there's people messaging me about X Y Z on how they can help me and. So what you were showing to me is what you showed to others, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where I was like, okay, man, that makes so much sense. You're just changing the product. Mm-hmm. Same hustle, different product. Yeah. Which is exactly what I did from going from drugs to barbering. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now I'm going from houses to land. So. And I take the emotion out of it. I got to take the X factor out of it that's going to stop the sale. Yeah. I'm a salesman. So if I can take that out of it, let's go get land all day. And fast forward, what, a month and a half in? Nah, wait, wait, wait. It was earlier than a month, bro, because I remember, like, I showed you how to get on the dialer. Mm-hmm. People don't know the dialer. That's where you make the calls. Yeah. I literally, I think it was, like, within a week, bro, oh, you first, got yeah. that first that deal first under contract. contract. And I was like, there's no way. Right, there's <laughs> no way. And I think that first one was 9000 bro, yeah. something you like told that. Me, you told me it was going to take... You like it'll probably take like two months, three months, but you'll you'll get a, you'll get a lead or something like that. Bro, you got on right away, and at this time, I'm showing everybody in my circle how to do the same thing. Yeah. Cause I wanted to get out of making calls. Yeah. So I'm showing all the people around me how to make calls, what to say, and you literally picked it so quick. I gotta stop you. There was an even bigger drive. My drive in the barber world when I got in the barber world was. It wasn't even my own success. I realized always if I give, if I give, I will get naturally. Mm. Like it's just gonna happen, right? So my biggest thing was when I told my business partners, listen, right now you guys have a 4.8 review. 
you have like 500, five star, 500 reviews, which equated to a 4.8 rating, right? Mm -hmm. I told them my goal when I open up this next shop is 5.0. Now my goal for all of them is to at least maintain a 4.9. You look at my newest shop, we got like 900 reviews, 4.9 rating. Amazing. The reviews help. When you, when I came to you, you had a goal of what? What was the goal for the year? A million. A million. Yeah. What did I say to you? I said, bro, <laughs> listen to me. If I can help you make a million dollars and I happen to make a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on the side, I'm happy. I'm content. Right. If let me help you get to your goal and naturally I'll hit my goal. That was my that was my that was my it factor. So while I'm still cutting hair, I started dialing for you. So in between appointments, I'm dialing. Mm. And remember, you would call me, yo, what you yeah. at the shop? You're not dialing? Bro, look at the dialer. I'm on, on the right dial. Now. I was That's like, like on <laughs> yo. I, it was it was the hustle. I was like, yo, yeah. bro, like I cut hair is only gonna take me so far. So it was okay. Let me do this as well because at this point, my bills. When you think about it, if you go from making a million dollars to back to making less than six figures, you still have those the bills. bills. Those bills don't stop. They're residual. Yeah. Damn. You, you talk about making residual money. These are residual bills. Twenty one thousand dollars. Yeah. Bills a month. Damn, Damn, you had less than six figures. And you had two cars at the time, from what I remember. I had two cars, an AMG yeah. 53 and a hundred thousand uh, dollar F one fifty, which is pretty much a Raptor. Wow. Yeah. And, and a motorcycle. Yeah. Plus, you was, <laughs> plus kids. You know what I mean? It was not easy. So yeah. when you you tell me that, it's like I'm I'm gonna go get it. Like Eli might be casting a realistic projection. It's two three months. I don't think that's a bad projection. It's realistic. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna scratch that though. We're gonna have to expedite this, bro. And you you shorten that time frame so much. It was literally like you was getting them back to back to the point where it was like even the percentage we worked on. Yeah. I raised that because you was getting them back to back. It was like I could see the potential in this mm -hmm. of you going like crazy. And I appreciate you, boy, because you helped me get through that storm, bro. Cause man, like whew, that was tough. Damn. Reflecting on it, that yeah. was tough, bro. There was there was definitely times where my light bill was behind, everything was behind, and that that money could have hit at a better time. Yeah. And then it went from one to two to three, yeah. and then we had that one lady that had the two properties. So I'm saying in like a month and a half, in a month and a half, we probably did like four, four or five deals. <laughs> right. Like yeah. It happened really quick, man. It happened really quick. And then in that talk is where this happened. Right. And we we're, we're getting to that too right now. So now you closing deals. You basically got out of that situation where you could pay your rent. You yeah. got some cushion now. And I remember we're sitting down. I'm on the computer. We're going over some calls. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, bro, you should do an academy. Yeah. And I'm like, what you mean? He was like, yeah, you can explain to them. Right? Like, so for those of you guys that aren't barbers out there, my business partner's name is Chris Basio. They call him a YouTube barber, right? Or at least they used to. He's one of the top educators in the, in the industry. Um, and he started an academy. We have a, we have a, like a, a brand called 245. Tied it right there. 245, right? Um, one of the hottest brands that are out there. Thank, you know, by the grace of God, thank God. And um, he said he wants to create an academy. And it wasn't just, you know, YouTube's cool. He makes money off YouTube. But it's like an academy will give him a chance to will give him a chance to be more vulnerable with a crowd that will appreciate it. Mm. You know what I mean? Where he can actually uh, give value. The biggest thing that you gotta focus on is just giving value. And that's one of the things I saw is like, yo, you're responding to people in DMs and you know, you might make a couple bucks here and there, whatever the case may be, but it was, bro, you can make money and at the same time, give more value than what you're getting paid for. Cause like, right. let's be real. You're giving way more value to the people in EDB than you get paid for. Right. And that's why I be telling people. They think, like, my course, $500, right? My weekly coaching calls. You said eight, nine grand I paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, my weekly coaching calls is $50. And what I need people to understand that the money, you got to see it as value. Yeah. The value you could get, the potential you could get from that small investment you can make six figures like Jazz. She literally turned 300 <laughs> to six figures in six to eight months. And she's going to do way more than that. And way more than that. So we sitting down <laughs> and Chris Basio's Academy is, you know, I've seen it be redone in different industries. Yeah. 
So with his academy, you know, like he he was focused on pouring into 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 his students. You know what I mean? So I'm always trying to connect dots. There's a bunch of dots on the screen, right? In my in my mind, or like my one of my mentors and my business partner, Dan Santana, always said it. It's like, it's like the shotgun effect. Bow! You got a bunch of dots everywhere. Yeah. And I was just connecting the dots. Mm. And as you connect the dots, eventually you get to your end goal, right? So with Basio's Academy, I seen what he was doing and the success he was having. And that's my brother. But this is my brother too. You know what I mean? You just took a chance on a kid. You know, even though I'm older than you, you took a yeah. chance on me. You know, I don't care. How, you got the game, bro. I'm just trying to follow the, foot, the blueprint. Yeah. I'm you know, following your footsteps. So when I seen that, I was like, yo, Elijah, you're selling yourself short. But more than yourself, you're selling everybody. Like, and at the time, I think you had like 200. Not, how many followers you had? Like, 20, like probably like 2,000. 2,000 bro. Like, if that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm looking at you like, bro, you, you, your followers ain't nothing like my. I had more, I had like 11,000 followers, I think, at the yeah. time. You know what I mean? So it's like, bro, like, I, technically, I have a bigger network than you. But mm -hmm. It was like, yo, bro, I want to see you be successful. So how about you take what you're giving out to me, take what you're giving out in your DMs, Put it in one spot. And at the time you were working on a course. Yeah. And that's all you were gonna drop. Is, I'm gonna just drop a course. But there's so many courses it's out just, there. Yeah. And there's no way people don't want just a course. Bro, I can turn around right now, I can I promise you. I can turn around right now, put together a PowerPoint presentation, and sell it as a course. Two hundred dollars, it'll sell. Yeah. Put enough ads behind it, it'll sell. I'll make money. But at but some point, it. you're going to get exposed. Yeah. Be like, yo, you didn't give no value. value. What I tell you yesterday, you're going to be determined on how good you're an educator, but how good your students are. Mm -hmm. So when you look back, and it's not all of them, obviously, you can't save everyone, right? But when you look at jazz and you see how successful jazz is, you know you're doing the right thing. Right. You know what I mean? You look at Brian, uh, Brandon and, you know, Brian, uh, Brandon's doing the, 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 the right thing. You're like, okay. I'm going in the right direction. Yeah. What? When, you're able, when you're able to look at your videographer and say like, yo, bro, I poured into you, you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. You know you're doing the right thing. It's just valid. It's more, it's more validation behind it. So when I say, yo, bro, like you need to start the academy, I'm not gonna put it together for you, but let me just cast the vision for you. A couple months from now, you're gonna be sitting here building a team. And this is the one part I wanna make super clear on this camera. I'm focused, <laughs> I'm good, all right. I watched, how old are you now? 28. 28. I watched a 27 year old Elijah bust his ass to build this. It wasn't even the academy. To build his business to what he was known as, to what he got to go on Brent's uh, podcast for, right? Because he flipped it. He went from DoorDash to investing in himself, believing in himself, putting in the work, calling by himself, waking up every morning. He lives right across the street from a club, could have been in there every night, was disciplined enough to not be in there every night, woke up the next morning, dialed. Shouts out to you, bro. You poured into that. You believed in yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's hard. That's hard. To believe in yourself for a lot of people is very hard. I got goosebumps. It's very hard. But then he was also scared, and I'm gonna use that word. He yeah. was also scared to let people in. Cause that wasn't the first time I asked you. Yeah, you asked me. I asked you multiple times, time. but I was persistent. And that's what made you like, yo, I asked you in January and you said, come holler at me in March. Mm -hmm. I see you in the club all the time, bro. What do you mean holler at me in <laughs> March, bro? We got the same circle of friends. You know, and I could have took that as my man's got a dickhead. I thought he was cool, he's a dickhead. I could have took it that way. No, instead I was like, all right, cool. When it's my time, what God wants for you, he'll give it to you. When it's time, you'll give me a shot. And when you give me a shot, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna show you that, yo, it, I was worth the shot. You know what I mean? And I, I think I delivered on that. No, nah, you definitely <laughs> did. But when when I when I saw that, I said, yo, you, you got to take this dude that can literally go from being scared, or you went from being this dude who was scared to not scared of an opportunity. You were scared of somebody messing up what you worked so hard for. Yeah. And I I could relate to that. It's a very vulnerable moment. To say like, yo, if I let somebody and, in. And it's it's not just that I was scared. It was also, I get a lot of people that hit me up, right? That say they're going to do this. They're going to put the work in. They're going to join my free class. I did about 10 free classes so far. Crickets. And <laughs> those people didn't show up to one. So it's like people will tell you what they're going to do, but not put the action behind it. And that's what you did. And I appreciate you for that. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. you ain't have to do it. You could have just been telling me persistently, like, I want to do this. I want to learn this. I want to, you know, go to this part. 
uh, make these calls. But you actually had to put in the work. If you think about it, though, all you're doing is reflecting on yourself back when you was door dashing. There's a hungry kid out there that's saying, like, bro, I wish somebody would just come on, just give me an opportunity. That's the only reason I want to get money now. Right. I don't want to be rich. I've been there. It's like, I like nice things, don't get me wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to be rich so I can give somebody an opportunity. Mm. And I want to give you an opportunity to, 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 to run with it, or I want to mm. give you an opportunity to fumble. But not all you can do is look in the mirror. Mirror. But what you did was you gave multiple people opportunity because now if you look at what you're doing, bro, you could have sold a thousand freaking lots. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to you, bro. You did it. Cool. You're the man. Yeah. And I now you wake up with, bro, I promise you, what you wake up when you see Jazz close a deal, it's better than you closing a deal. Like, bro, she, she was saying that she got 70K in escrow projected to close next month. Like, I'm not getting a dime from that. But it feels like I'm making 70K too, bro. Like, what? Like, you about to make 70K in a month off of something I taught you? That's the literally the best feeling in the world. And this is why, like, I did the academy. Because even when you told me, I don't have to do the academy, bro. You don't. I closed enough deals and I'm closing enough deals where this is, I could just do that. But when you told me to, like, make the academy, I was scared. I was nervous. Uh, I didn't know how to put it together, but you giving me that idea. I thought about it every single day. I'm like, I'm already helping people on a smaller scale just from my course. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could put this academy together and really provide value, you know, weekly coaching calls, have these people look for uh, sellers based off of my builder's criteria, I don't have to make calls no more, bro. Yeah. I don't have to do the eight hours texting and cold calling. I'm literally just providing builders, criteria, price, and I'm making money. You coaching now, bro. At this point, you co you're the coach, and you're giving, a, you're giving somebody, the next dude up, a chance to play the quarterback, a chance to play running back. you the start of the show now, bro. So now you just sit back and coach. Eventually, you become the owner of the organization. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like when I, when I seen that in you, if you look at it, look at it, you can look at it in so many different ways. You can look yeah. at it like, yo, you see people, you want to give people an opportunity, so now you want to give them game. You don't have to. I didn't have to tell you about the academy. You did it. But I seen this. Oh, this worked for this guy, my business partner. Yo, bro, let me drop that gem. I don't make nothing. Do I make a penny off the academy? No. Nothing. And I never want a penny off. Let me be clear on that. I never want it. I get addicted to seeing people succeed. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that literally gives me feel like, bro, I want to see you win. I said it last night to Jazz. I was like, yo, I just, I'm happy to see him win. I'm happy to look a year later, because imagine now what the Academy does in five years. And you just have off, way too many episodes, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and just off of that one idea, that one conversation, that one, like, you know what? I think you could do that same thing. Yeah. You, you was telling me, I remember you was hyped up. Yeah. You was like, yo, you could really make this into... Something huge. Huge. Game changer. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head like, yo, can I do this? Is yeah. this really possible? It's a question for yourself, and I think you answered it, bro. You know what I mean? And I promise you, you will always sit back, and when you reflect on it, you'll be like, you know what? I could have sold a million houses by myself. But the fact that we sold a million houses, or a million lots by myself, the fact that we sold a million lots together, it's worth it. Yeah, I it changed. Is. Think about how many lives you're changing, bro. Yeah. Bro, yeah. what was that? What was that doing before, before before she sold? Before she jumped on this? She was working working at a law firm. I law think. firm, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched the episode. I was like, but working at a law firm, right? So, or or, or, or you look at um, Dan, yeah. where he said he was uh, on his episode where he said uh, he was doing the, the manholes. Yeah, he got shit on him. Like, is this all I got, bro? You, bro, that's changing lives, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like somebody's gonna change that person's life. Yeah, it's rewarding to be that person to be you. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's more than money can buy you. Yeah, even in my academy, right, when we do the weekly Zoom calls, there's some people in a, like, on the calls at work, in the freaking warehouse, stacking boxes, listening to our calls. I'm like, yo, when that person start getting deals and he gets out of that warehouse, it's over. And he's now living in the high rise, like, that's gonna be the best feeling to me because now I've seen somebody. Start from the beginning, start from ground up. 
and build something special. Mm -hmm. If I could get now a thousand people, a hundred thousand people, I'll like say, you're never not gonna make money. Let's be real. At the end of the day, everybody's goal is to make money, right? You're never not gonna make money, but I promise you, you'll make more money and feel. If you focus on like if you keep doing what you're doing, just focus on giving value, like how you do on all your weekly calls and whatnot. If you focus on just that and keep doing that, and then just try to give more value. You're never going to go broke, bro. That's the reality of it, right? Yeah. But it's going to feel more, it's going to, but even if you got rid of the academy, you look at it, you're going to sell properties or you're going to sell lots. You're still going to make money. So no matter what, you're going to make money. It's just, would you rather do it by yourself? Or would you rather do it with a team? With a team. And I would say this at first, when I first started making money doing this wholesaling land, I ain't going to lie. I think, especially with our community, we want to keep it silent. Yeah. We don't want nobody getting onto our source. Everybody want to hold the source, yeah. right? And I was like that at first, mm -hmm. you know, until I started like, you know what? I could do this partner with people mm -hmm. and then also with the change in lives. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, you know, especially at that time, oh, yeah. I was like, if you know, if you take the action on what I'm saying, I literally could guarantee you 30 days that change your life. 30 days. And that's what Jazz did. I'm about to have Courtney. He's another dude that did a consultation call with me mm -hmm. real early on. He's yeah. coming, he's flying in next week from Philly. Like we're gonna talk about that Trenches. story, but he closed deals. Like that's how certain I knew. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they took that risk, because I knew 300 for somebody that don't really have that much. That's a lot of money. Yeah. For them to actually take that risk, it was like, yeah, I'm going to give them everything they know in 30 minutes yeah. to get a deal. And that's what they did. And it's literally that's the love. best feeling because now I'm getting to speak about it. And now it's recorded for lifetime. Look, so you, my grandkids is going to be That's all I say. But when, like, when, you, when you have children, bro, imagine when they sit back and reflect on YouTube because YouTube is going to be around forever. But when, you, when they're able to sit back and reflect on um on YouTube and say like, yo, bro, like, yo, granddad, you really, you made a difference, bro. Cause it's all, for me, like I said, the only reason I want to get money is to help, help you. Yeah. I, I want to do like inner city community. Like, bro, my boy Vic Blends, you know the dude who be on TikTok, uh, cutting hair, like the random people? Nah. The little light skin cat? I gotta see it. Um, you gotta he, show me he, after. He, bro, he's super famous on TikTok, bro. But like, he just be going out to random people and just, yo, I'll get your hair cut in streets. He's popping all over TikTok, right? Wow. Well, he just, he just dropped in his old hood. He dropped a, he built a basketball court for the community. It's called the Big Blance Court. Bro, fire. That's fire. Like, that's something I want to do, bro. Like, I want to do something like that in Tampa. Bro, in Tampa, if y'all know, bro, Tampa's like the hub for like all the billionaires right now. There's 27 skyscrapers going up. There's so much money. We got a racetrack being built. You know, there's so much money coming to Tampa. But it's like, yo, the rich are going to come here. But what happens to the poor? Poor. Dave. Ain't nobody looking out for them. Yeah. Ain't nobody trying to get back. I'm not saying nobody. Yeah. But, like, there's not a lot of people. So it's like, bro, if you ask me right now, go, Chris, if you had a million dollars, you could just throw away. Like, I'm not going to the club. I'm not buying jewelry. I'm not buying the Mary Jeans. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to go do something like that. I'm going to go feed the homeless or something. Like, like, when I say feed the homeless, I mean, like, as many as I can find. So, bro, bro I want to know, like, what changed this mindset? Was it, like, I know you said, mentioned earlier, was it your girl? Like, was it being in that depressed state? Was it, like, what was that? Cause that's, you, ever look at, you ever look at rappers and they're like, yo, they're so rich. How can they be sad? How do they commit suicide? Mac Miller. Like, you know, like, uh, how? Yeah. Like, uh, Robin Williams. Like, they're, f yo, dude, they got you money, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how can, how would they ever commit suicide? I never understood it. I was always like, man, that's so weak. That's such a cop out. I was always my thought process till it becomes yeah, you. Yeah. And I, yo, I'm not gonna put my people's business out there, but yeah. there's somebody close to us that has the same story. Damn. You don't realize how close to home it is. Yeah. You feel me? My mom was suicidal. You don't realize that, bro, until that person's in that in that situation. And the money, we like to say like money won't can't buy happiness. You know, my me and ex's joke is yeah, but to put a good deposit on it. You feel me? You right. know what I mean? Like money, the things you do with money can give you happiness. But the money itself will not give you happiness. And that was my whole mentality is coming from a kid who didn't have it to have it. And I was like, I'm happy. Yeah. Until it's like, nah, what the money was being used for was bad. There is bad money. You know what I mean? And you know, I'm not trying to make this a super religious point, but it's like, you know, I really found my my faith and my connection back with God. 
And when it came to that, it was like, all right, going forward, what I want you to do is I just want you to use me as a vessel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want you, let me be your warrior. Use me as a vessel to change lives, as many lives as I can. And I don't have to make a billion dollars to do that. I can do it on a podcast. You know what I mean? I can, yeah. I can share my story. Like, yo, bro, I've been rich, I've been broke, rich again, broke again. You know what I mean? Um, to comfortable, you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm good now. You know what I mean? So it, it as I just want to see, I want to raise my kids the right way. I want to, I want to live a good life and I want to make an impact. Um, one of my business with 245, the, the slogan for 245 is die a legend. Mm. It's a legacy, bro. Yeah. What you doing right now, like you said, I want to give it for my grandkids. Like, yeah, you want to pass down wealth, but it's like, yo, you want to pass down morals as well. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you, you want to just be, you just want to be rich? I asked my son, my son the other day got in the car said, dad, I need a million dollars. I said, that's it? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I need a million dollars. What do you want a million dollars for? There's this uh, movie called La La Crocodile. I think it's a movie. Um, La La Crocodile. He's like, I, I want to buy a pet crocodile. I'm like, I got you. I'll let you know at the end of the month, bro. He's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. He's like, dad, what would you do with a million dollars? Mm. I said, son, if I had a million dollars to just spend right now, he was like, yeah, I was like, if I didn't do something with the inner city kids, what I would probably do is I'd probably go to Africa or Syria and I would try to help develop infrastructure and feed, you know, as many families and have running water and put clothes on, build schools, whatever it can be, because there's a lot of places in third world countries that don't have things like that. And he's like, that's what you would spend your money on? This is a six year old. Yeah. That's what you would spend your money on? Yeah. And this is before school, right? We have all these morning talks every morning. He's like, that's what you spend your money on? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, why don't their parents just buy them food? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, so now I got explain yeah, this. Yeah, right. I'm like, I'm like, listen, my man. I said, uh, their parents don't have money. And this is why I tell you, like, you won't, you are, you sometimes you're not grateful for the things you have. And this is why I tell you, you need to be grateful because there's mm -hmm. kids that don't have it. So I'm talking to a six year old. Some parents might have done this, but I talk to my son like he's an adult. And I told him, uh, I pulled up uh, Google Images and I typed in African children. Type it in. You know what his response was? Why do these kids look like skeletons? And I'm like, because they don't have what you have. Right. So when he seen it, he was like, he grabbed the phone from me and just started scrolling. He's like, Dad, this is sad. Yeah. He went from sitting in his seat to standing up in the car. This is a six-year-old. Yeah. If I can instill this thought process into a six-year-old, then you can do this with your grandkids and, and it could trickle down, right? To care about the next person. person. He said, Dad, I don't care about the money anymore. We got to save these people. Hmm. All of a sudden, proud dad moment. You know? right. All of a sudden, my <laughs> six-year-old is having the same vision as me, realizing like, yo, we're blessed. I don't care if I, I don't care to have a billion dollars. I just need enough to, I just need enough money to change my family's life. Yeah. So that I can instill, you know, you know, those morals and go forward. That's like my goal. You know, that's like my drive. So when it came time to so like, yo, I beat wanting to commit suicide. I said, okay, well, what's the, if I, if my life ended today, you know, like it's over. So now everything from here on, what do you do with it? This is bonus time. Yeah. You technically committed to killing yourself. Your life's over, bro. What are you doing this fourth quarter? Right. Or with this next half? I'm only 32. Like, you know, you know, so you gotta, I make it to 80, you know what I mean? But you got a lot of time, bro. And I already see it, bro. Impact. Like how you say, like how you see in me, I see that same in you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I went from seeing you popping bottles to now talking about giving back, changing the world, you know, like you got to just change. It's, it, let's get into mindset. Yeah, because it's it's I don't want to drink no more. You know, what I mean, it's, yeah. you know, my homies are looking we, at me. Bro, we was in the spot yesterday. Yeah, I'm used to you turning up crazy. We all conservative conservative talking about business yeah. in the spot. Like, I would have never talked about business before. Right. I'd have been like, yo, where's the next bottle at, bro? Yo, 50 bottles of champagne to the section. Like, that's real stories, you know what I mean? Like, yo, 10K in a strip club. You know, that was the life. I wish I had all that money back. <laughs> you know what I mean? But stupid. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. and if you really break it down, it's like, think about us as a culture. What do we spend money in a strip club? What do we spend money in? in, the, in and it's not to say, like, don't ever do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously, there's certain things you need to celebrate. We celebrate EDB Academy, bro. That's what we went out last night for. Bro. Right. Jazz success. Everybody's success last night. You know, like, yo, like, this is huge. This is, this is not something small. Let's go celebrate. That's when you go do it. There's guys that do it every weekend, every night. Yeah. 
And it's like talk about yeah, talk to seventeen year old Chris real quick. What would you tell him like in terms of this? Like all the like teenagers, they they can't wait to get become twenty one to go to the clubs, turn up. But I feel like the, the early twenties. This is where you gotta apply the most pressure, bro. Your early twenties <laughs> could really change your later twenties and your thirties for life. Like yeah. you could take it up another level. So talk to I seventeen like year old Chris real quick. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a million dollars worth of game right now, bro. <laughs> Yo, real rap, because Michael B. Jordan just had this question. Yeah, and I don't know if you've seen the podcast. I did. He just dropped Creed three, but um, one of the things he said was like. I'm a sacrifice it early in my twenties, and it's, it's so cliche, but it's successfully excluded. Like I always tell you, man, I'm a sacrifice it early in my twenties, so that in the last part of life I'm living free. Right. When I say I'm living free, like I'm living free. Like if I want to go travel to Dubai for you know a month and a half with my kids, and I'm not worried about work. I'm free. What I tell you last night, I want to be the Harriet Tubman of financial slavery. Mm. That's yes. how you gotta view EDB Academy. I wanna help so many people get out of that financial slavery, bro. Damn. That's powerful. That Harriet Tubman was a gangster, bro. Y'all know the story. Y'all gonna go watch that. She, she went, escaped and came back for him, bro. 12 times. But every dude in the street will tell you, yo, when I make it, we make it. But they get gone and never come back. Yeah. And we call it loyalty. You know, it's, I think the code that we live by, that everybody abides by, is, is just very broken. Like, if you gotta really mean that. Like, yo, now, if I come back, but here's the thing, it goes yeah. two sides. Cause yeah, because I, I was gonna back, say that, right? Like, you could go back too, and not everybody wants to go up with you. Yeah. And some people they may even see you shine and think, like, oh, since I can't do it, let me pull him back. Cause he's shining too much, so, and we came from the same hood. So the, exactly, and it, it, they stuck in their ways, and it's, it's the it's the mentality, the mindset is just broken. You know what I mean? It's like I, I know people on welfare that are doing six figures, but you're still on welfare. welfare. How, how that makes sense? Yeah, that don't make sense. They just sense. don't want to let go of it. I I got I'll be real. One of my aunts are like that. You know what I mean? Like I I be I keep it a buck with you. You know what I mean? Like I ain't gonna sell out, but you yeah. Know, uh, if she make money, she make bread, it's still on welfare. It's like, yo, mom, we got to kind of get away from that. Like, don't go for the government assistance. Just try to get away from the government assistance. That's something I learned from my mom. My mom didn't want that. She wanted to be off of it. But you got people having kids that want to be on that, in that system. You got to change the mindset. Um, so one of the things that I realized early on is the most success I had is when I cut people out of my life. Mm. Talk about it. That is one of the biggest stories I can tell you, bro. My mentor tells me all the time, like, the people you hang with, that's the most important. Like, you could literally lose yourself by hanging with the wrong people, right? Let me give you an example. If you hang with people that go to the gym every day, you're going to go to the gym. Whether you want to or not. Whether you want to or not. So if you seeing you around people that's getting lit and not really getting lit just to celebrate, but getting lit to you know, get away from their inner demons. Like, that's going to become you, so, like... I'll give you a perfect example. It happened last night. <laughs> Talk to me. Before I went into that club last night, we went there to celebrate, and Elijah pulled that car. He said, hey, you missed my last time we celebrated, so you got to pull up tonight. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I got to pull up. I ain't been out since my birthday. It's been two months. Mm -hmm. I ain't been out. You know what? Let's go out. So I go out to the club, and before I walked in that club, I said, I am not drinking because Ramadan is on, I'm Muslim, Ramadan is on the 22nd, and I said, come Ramadan, once Ramadan hits, I'm never drinking again. I told you that earlier. But I said I wasn't gonna drink last night all the way to Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I already had made my commitment. Get in that club, I see you happy, see my girl happy, I see my boy Paige, he got a packed event, last night was jumping. Right. I was like, you know what, I'm just happy for the success of everybody around me. My original commitment was the 22nd, so I persuaded myself and I ended up having a drink. Mm. You know what I mean? I had two, two drinks, you know what I mean? But the Chris you know before would have got wasted. You know what I mean? So it, you can definitely trick yourself as well. So you gotta, you also have to cut off your own uh, uh, habits. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. How do you do that? How would you, like, if you was Consistency. Consistency. Okay. You're gonna fail. When you start, you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I'm sure when you, 
the first day, I'm gonna call a thousand people. Call a thousand people. Second day, I'm gonna call another thousand people. By that first week, you're not getting no leads back. Nobody's saying you back. You're not getting nothing going. How do you keep going? Hmm. Right? What's gonna happen is you're gonna turn around and you're gonna beat yourself up and be like, you know what? Now you come back, you're only doing 250 calls. You set it up to do a thousand calls, bro. Yeah. You gotta stick to that. So your fail in the beginning is to get back on that horse and eventually you create a a, a, a habit yeah. of consistency of now nah, I do a thousand. So then you realize, all right, maybe not a thousand, eight hundred is that sweet part that I can say, okay, we're doing eight hundred. So now when it's time to like you're at seven hundred calls, you're like, nah, so now you have that discipline and say, yeah. I set a goal of eight hundred, I'm doing eight hundred, and now you knock it out. I think I like that too, cause like how I see it, right? I, I try to get at least 100 sit-ups every day, right? Consistency. Now, when I don't get to do those 100, let's say I don't do it in the morning, afternoon, I get in late from getting lit. Mm. If I can't get to 100, I at least want to do 10, 15, something. Because mm. now it tricks my mind to say, like, I'm never going to miss a day. Yeah. And I feel like that's the same thing with making Sorry. calls, with text. You do that anything in life. You may not be a thousand, a hundred percent every day, mm -hmm. but if you put some type of percentage, it's better than nothing. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of like, so like you look at me just on the drinking thing, right? I've been saying I want to stop drinking since, I want to say December of 2022, right? I've, I've been saying it to everybody that, that I hang out with. I don't want to drink no more. I don't want to drink no more. I don't want to drink no more. And I'm a social drinker. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a social drinker. So it's like, if I go out, I want to drink. If I go to a steakhouse, I might have a glass of wine, or whatever. Because I'm not, I'm not the drunk that I used to be, right? Mm -hmm. So if when I look at it all and I, I, I measure my growth, you know, I'm like, okay, I went from being drunk all the time to I can go to the clubs. It'd been nice when I go to the club. My birthday, I had, I barely drank that day. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm gonna fall along the way, and my goal is now, okay, cool. I'm gonna make a strict commitment on the 22nd, and I want to be able to like, not on an AA meeting type tip, but I want to be on one of those, um, <coughs> excuse me. I want to be on one of those um, where like like the like the AA guys are like I'm a, I'm one year sober, two years yeah. sober. Because the re and the reason why I want to do it is because I, when I like I said it goes back to the cutting the people off thing. I started realizing when I really stopped drinking like that, I stopped getting invited to the club. Yeah. And I told you last night, I used to get to invited to the club because they know I'm gonna pay for the section. Yeah. You're not my friend. You don't care about me. Why did I go out last night? Because I know you got love for me, bro. So I know when you call my phone, it wasn't, hey, yo, Chris, bro, you trying to pick up the tab? And, and I didn't know that because I know you got money. No, it was, it's the first thing you said. Yo, bro, whether you come, you know, wh whether you can make it for the shoot before the club, I just want you there, bro. Yeah. We made money together, bro, and I just, I want you there, bro. I want you in my presence. I want the energy. Yeah. So I know there was a true care. So it was like, you know what? I want to be around people like you. Yeah. And I'll be real, bro. If, if you're in my circle, I'm looking every day to cut somebody out. <laughs> I'll be real. That's 100%. Yeah. I'm looking to get rid of you. Circle, circle got smaller. Everybody can't, can't go. go. That's a fact, bro. That's what Nip said. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's, it's, that's the mentality I would, I would advise for everybody. So if I was talking to 17-year-old, Chris, yeah. don't have so many friends. Mm. You don't need them all. Pick the ones that are really your friends, that really got love for you, you know what I mean? Like, I know my boy Mark, my boy Johnny, they call me right now. Bro, my boy Mark and J Jason are in the, in the ER uh, right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm checking on them nonstop. I actually love those boys, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and they're not super rich or like that, but I got mad love for them. Those are my brothers, you know what I mean? My mm -hmm. boy Johnny. I got like three solid dudes, aside from my business partners, obviously, you know, that I, since I'm a kid. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, really, you, you got cut out, bro. Right. I'm sorry, man. So I tell them that. And I would tell them, yo, stay your ass out the club. 17-year-old mm. Chris, stay your ass out the club. It was the, the biggest downfall of anything I've ever done. Anytime I was successful, I stayed out the club. That's a fact, bro. You can but, go party later. Yeah, man. We're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna end it right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we are giving them hella game. Yeah. I'm definitely going to need you to come up on another one. But like, where can these people follow you? Uh, subscribe to you if you got a YouTube. Where can they, you know, get in touch with Chris? So my Instagram, like I said, my Instagram is, is now private, but um, definitely, like, if you watch this podcast, you can definitely reach out. Uh, it's official, Chris Loco. I'm always down to chop it up with anyone. So official, K R I S L O K O. Follow Chris Loco, and if you guys want to tap into the academy, if you want to learn how to close your first deal, text Land 
at 813-687-8867. We will get you right. EDB Academy. Game changers. Game changers.